what is going on YouTube? What are you guys up to? It's been a couple days since I made a video again, almost a week actually. And today we're here to make another video and today we are going to be talking about how to properly adjust your clutch cable. Now, this topic has been covered many times I believe by people on forums and this and that. I believe it's easier to see in person. I'm going to try and simplify this and keep this video relatively short while being very quick and straight to the point. I don't want to overcomplicate this. I don't want to undercomplicate this because there's things that need to be done right and things that need to be adjusted properly for this to work properly. I believe this is still going to be like a 15 minute video probably because there's so much information to cover in a short period of time and I want your guys' cables to work right. I see a lot of guys and get in a lot of cars that have very poor clutch cable or clutch pedal feels. Uh, and I want to let you guys know most of that poor or really stiff clutch pedal comes from just very poor quality clutch cables. That's the only thing that can pretty much cause it. Besides maybe a bad clutch or something physically being broken, holding the clutch or you know preventing you from being able to push the clutch pressure plate fingers all the way in. Um, but that's it. So your pedal will either feel very stiff and not smooth, kind of catchy, like it's hard and soft, hard and soft as it goes. Uh, that's a bad sign. That means your cable is probably about to snap. Or if you push it down and it stops and your car is making a weird noise, these two or this video is probably not going to solve your problems, but this video will solve a lot of people's shifting problems where they can't grab gears or their car's grinding between shifts. and. If your car, you go to put it in gear and you hear like a thunk in the rear end or you feel like the car move when it goes into gear, all these can be a, uh, a sign of the clutch itself dragging a little bit on the flywheel. And the reason for this is you are not getting proper disengagement. So today we're going to show you guys how to get proper disengagement on this, how to adjust it thereon after it's been adjusted because as the clutch itself wears, you may or may not need to adjust it. You just gotta be aware and uh, pay attention to these things. Know uh, how your pedal feels and if it starts changing its feel, uh, why? And uh, you know, just be, like I said, be aware. So let's get into it. We're gonna start off with what a clutch cable and quadrant and all that looks like. So let me show you guys that. Okay, so here, guys, is our cable. On this end, we have focus so on this end this is the end that goes onto the transmission right and goes this is the part that gets held on the bell housing this white part that goes all the way whoop, to here the bracket this is the bracket I'm talking about guys you guys got to make sure this bracket is bolted to the car if it's not you'll have deflection problems and stuff like that that's the reason for it. put it there and it also keeps your cable in place so make sure that brackets there and bolted in place it's very easy to strip the bolt that holds it in so be careful if you do change it just don't strip it and then we have this end of the cable that goes onto the quadrants this is our quadrant this is a firewall adjuster. That's what both of these are. So this is the one that came with this. This is a BBK. This is a BBK. The BBK cable is currently in a friend's car. This is my factory cable. And then this is just another firewall adjuster for Fords that happens to have a locking, I guess it's like a locking nut essentially is what it is. Um, this one doesn't have it. They don't send it with one. You don't really need it in my opinion. They don't move, but uh, just in case. One thing I do as well if you guys would like, I think it makes it easier, is I put some anti-seize on these threads. So before I put it in the car, I'll spin this off, put anti-seize on it, and spin it back together. This is the factory uh, cable, and some guys will even utilize this factory cable by taking this two-bolt piece off right here. You can see, you guys can see there's clips there. You unclip it and pull it off. It'll come off. And then you can use your factory cable with like the Maximum Motorsports kit and stuff like that. But right here is the end that goes into the quadrant. So what I want to show you guys is that it goes in. Let me adjust this cable a little bit. Basically how this works is just like this. So this is how this is going to work, guys. This quadrant is going to go between like that, slide in, and then it goes and locks. And if you see, as you guys can see, it locks into place like so. That's one adjustment. And then there's obviously this other one, which you can do the same thing and go and lock it into place like so. So there's two adjustments on this. Um, depending on your cable length, 
it will tell you which side or you'll be able to figure out which side this goes into. I want to show you guys how to do that. Okay guys, so right here's my setup. Very simple. If you look down here, right here at the firewall adjuster, this is it right here so you guys know. You look right there. It's very, very simple. All it literally is, if the camera will focus. Okay guys, there it is right there. That's the firewall adjuster. This is it. It's kind of hard to see. Mine's got a little bit of marring on it because I grabbed it with a pair of ice grips to spin it. Um, but literally, this is what your cable rides on and you just spin that counterclockwise will come out and clockwise will go in just like any uh, regular threaded bolt. Think of it that way. And all this does is as this cable comes out, it's pulling the slack. You know, if you have any slack, it'll be pulling it. But it's literally shortening the cable essentially is what it's doing. It is very important to have it nice and tight. Now, most Cobras and almost every factory Ford car, in my opinion, shifts pretty poorly at some point because they're what they call self-adjusting. And they have on the quadrant a part when the pedal comes up, it's supposed to click. It's like a bunch of little teeth. And so as it wears, it'll click to the next tooth and the next tooth and the next tooth. And so that's Ford's way of doing it. If you have a factory setup, you may be able to walk out to your car, grab your clutch pedal and physically just pull up on it and pull up pretty hard. And that's going to, if it can, get you past that next tooth or onto that next tooth, which is going to tension it and be nice and tight and then give you a lot better feel. The problem with this setup is almost every car gets to a point where you're between the teeth. In my opinion, Ford did not make the teeth fine enough or have, it's too big of a gap between the teeth. Therefore, you hit a point where the clutch pedal needs a little more throw, but you can't pull it up and tighten it or get it to that next tooth because it's just a little too far. Now, if you have your buddy helping you and you may be able to run under the car and like, you know, help it with a screwdriver or something or get it to you know get it to itself just get to the next tooth and you may be okay i was at a point in this car where i was between it wouldn't let me shift very well i was having problems it was driving me nuts so i went ahead and ordered all this and so i went through the trouble of already doing this basically for you guys but this is what does that manually so instead of having a click up on a tooth you just right here spin this in or spin it out depending on if you're too tight or you need more tension and that's what adjusts your cable tension. So I'm going to go under the dash and let me get this light and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like under there. So we kind of have, we're going to start from there and, and I guess we're going to rework ourselves out to the outside of the vehicle. That way you guys know. Can you guys see that right there? That is physically the quadrant. It is pretty difficult to see. Um, I don't know that I can get the camera everywhere we want it. So there we go guys, that's a quadrant right there. It's difficult to get the camera in, but let me go ahead and actuate the clutch for you guys so you can see exactly what it does. So this is the pedal in the resting position or all the way up. And then when you push the pedal down, boop, that's what it's doing. So it's physically the cables on it up top. And when you're pulling it, you can see the cable right there. It gets pulled out, boop, and the pedal goes down. So that's all it does so from there guys what we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside the car again I'm gonna show you right here this is where the cable then comes out out through the firewall adjuster runs all the way down as you guys can see right there goes down and it curves and then let's get under the car I'm gonna show you guys okay guys so we're under the car here's the cable coming down you can see there's a bracket for it is like right up there. Um, you can see the oil filter is a little in the way. That's the bracket. It's hard to see, but that's it right right below the oil filter um, going there. So mine's in place. Make sure it's routed. Not being kinked. I tried to do big long swoops whichever way you route it, but you want to have wide curves because that's going to be even better and make the cable shift smoother and slide smoother. And then it runs there. Runs underneath. You guys can see right there there it is going that's the plastic piece going through the transmission and then to the shift fork so if your guys a shift fork 
looks to be bent or something you may want to change it your shift fork should be pretty straight but you can see the upper hole is where you feed it through because it's bigger and then you slide it down to the bottom hole there's a slit all the way through and that's where it holds itself if you guys look at my shift fork uh, it's hard to see but if you guys look at my shift fork there's not any play in it this thing is stiff because we have tension on our throw out bearing so a lot of guys make the mistake of trying to put an air gap between your throw out bearing and your clutch fingers and you can't do that if you have an air gap there you're not going to have enough throw with the way the quadrants are designed and the clutch pedal the throw that you get is just not enough throw if you have a uh, air gap on your throw out bearing to pressure plate fingers so you want to make sure that this guy's got some tension on it and the easiest way to do that guys is run your cable through you know feed it through here and run it through and you should have to physically pull this cable towards the front of the car like you would be if you were pushing the clutch a little bit to get the cable to slide down if you don't your tensions not going to be right but what you can do is do that slide it through even if it has it's a little bit loose what we're going to do then is once you have your cable down and ran through and in this even if this is guys a little sloppy and has some play in it the next thing we're going to do is go back to the top and adjust it with the firewall adjuster so let me show you guys how we're going to do that so next if you guys have a lot of slop or play in the cable to shift fork you're just going to take this and you're literally going to spin it counterclockwise and it's going to start coming out and that's going to start putting tension on your cable and when you're tensioning that cable you don't want to go too much but you want to go probably more than most people think a lot of guys think that they can just put it in there and right as soon as the cable touches the fork is right as soon as it's out of play like it can't move that's what i did the first time i did this thinking that was right and it's actually not right you still don't get the proper amount of throw that you need you physically are going to be starting to put a little bit of load on those fingers and now there's guys out there freaking out going oh my god that's totally wrong you don't do that you don't want any pressure on the fingers in all actuality i've done this up and down on numerous cars literally probably 30 times now and every single car i've done everybody's loved it they say man my car's never shifted better it's worked great i've done it on my own car numerous times i've checked throw out bearings after 10,000 15,000 miles this throw out bearing this last one i had had 10,000 miles on it and was completely fine and my car's never really made a bunch of throw out bearing noise uh but the next thing we want to do guys let me grab the flashlight is check the pedal feel so after that's done and ran, we want to make sure that our pedal doesn't have a bunch of slop in it. If your pedal is like really loose and floppy, we need to adjust the firewall adjuster. So your pedal should feel pretty much like, like this. You should be able to push it and have a little bit of resistance in the beginning. Um, you definitely don't want this floppy. Like if you look at my pedal, I push it and let go. It goes right back all the way to the top. I can't pull it anymore. That's what you guys want. If you don't have that, you're not going to get complete disengagement because what's going to happen is your pedal is going to be going down and it's going to be doing nothing for the first inch or two that it goes down and then it's going to start to throw, pushing, pulling the cable, pushing on the fingers, but by the time you get to the floor, it's still not fully disengaged. So Maximum Motorsports recommends, and I agree with the recommendation, it's worked very well for my car, five pounds to move a half an inch. So you should take five pounds on this pushing down to move the first half an inch. And if that's not the case, if it's three pounds and it moves a half an inch, that means you need to tighten your cable or twist your firewall adjuster out and that will then give you more preload. So retest, oh, okay, it's now four pounds for a half an inch. Now tighten it again and go to five. Obviously, guys, it's you can't like you could get a scale and physically get a scale or something and put on the back of it and then push with your hand and watch the travel um, and kind of just guesstimate the travel. You don't have to get super technical with this. You guys can literally just come out and just make sure your pedal for the first little bit. It moves a little bit, but it feels good. You know, like this guy, in my opinion, could use a little bit more and I've almost put a little bit more pressure on it. But, you know, because it moves more than a half an inch for you know that's definitely more than half an inch but it's done me well so i haven't you know messed with it but uh the more that you tighten this and the, the tighter that this is the higher the pedal is going to be when it starts engaging the clutch 
and the quicker it's going to disengage the clutch when going down. So on this car, with my pedal about there, it's about all the way disengaged and I still have that much room to go to the floor. So as you guys can see, that's about disengaged. That's just free play almost. So to each his own, you can kind of adjust your pedal to where you want it to be with how the clutch engages and disengages by adjusting the firewall adjuster. But at the same time, when you adjust the firewall adjuster, you don't want to have too little of play because then you're going to be grinding gears and it's not going to be fully disengaging. A relatively easy way to see whether or not it's disengaging or is dragging is put your car on jack stands, you know, in the air where the rear tires are in the air. What you want to do is put your car in the air, start letting the clutch out slowly and watch and see where the tires start to spin and where the tires start to spin is going to be the point at which the clutch is engaging and that's going to be exactly where you know how far you have to be down on your pedal in order for your clutch to start engaging and you can change that by adjusting the firewall adjuster as long as you push the clutch down you put it in first gear and the wheels aren't spinning that's good if you push the clutch down and you put it in first gear and the wheels start spinning you probably need to adjust your firewall adjuster by backing it out some more putting more tension on that cable therefore you get more throw you can do the opposite because when you have it adjusted too far out and you push the cable in, the car is going to actually not drag at all right when the cable is pushed down, but you're going to be lifting the pedal out and you're going to be like, man, this thing's coming forever before it starts engaging the pedal. I personally like mine far at the top. That way when I push the pedal down, it disengages the clutch quickly and when I let it out, you know, I'm off of it and it's, it's right at the top. It's just I get quicker better shifts I feel when it's that way and at the same time I know that my clutch is not dragging when I have my foot all the way down on the pedal and I'm going between gears driving like in the city or whatever I know it's not dragging I'm gonna get the best shifts and the like smoothest shifts see where it's engaging and you can then from there where it's engaging adjust your your, your pedal as long as you know it's fully disengaging if it's not fully disengaging you probably have an issue somewhere else like if you've adjusted your firewall adjuster really far out and it's still not disengaging the clutch, you may have another problem, you may have a clutch issue, and you will probably need to pull a tranny out to get that looked at. my foot's there I'll let off 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 all the way right there right there is where my car just starts just starts moving the tire see it's barely dragging not going that fast I push in a little bit tire will slow down so you guys can see right here and I have a decent amount to go from there I have all that room to go so all that room is extra room but you don't want to be too far up like I am because if you're too far up like I am, you're going to be actually pushing on the springs a little too much. But you can really feel it in the pedal where you're at on the springs. And as you guys do this and play with it, you guys will figure it out. I really truly recommend that you guys do this and play with it. And every car is different. So this car right now has a transmission problem in my opinion. I've gone through this up and down. Uh, it used to work fine and then the tranny started acting weird and I've been playing with it. So now is the time I decided to make a video for you guys on this topic. So that's part of the reason why I'm doing this and I'm going to show you guys the transmissions coming out of my car shortly. That's basically it guys. Um, if you guys have any other comments or questions let me know. If you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Look at that beautiful car right there. I love seeing that every day. But uh, if you guys like this video, like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you guys have any video topics you want me to cover, let me know. Comment down below and I'll try and uh, do them for you. I think one I'm going to do for a subscriber is going to be the difference between convertibles and hardtop terminators. That's going to be my next video, I'm pretty sure, guys. But as of now, that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.